This morning we read together from Psalm chapter 29, Psalm of David. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon leap like a calf, Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare. And in, in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Amen. Friends, this morning we have read Psalm 29, verse 1 to 11. I want to coin a phrase, a theme, which will be the food for the soul for today and for the year. I am from the great Karoo, where Africans is dominant. If I was at home, I was going to say, I'm going to give you part course. If I was at around Lesotho, if I was in Natal, I'm trying my best. I want to give a theme and say from the passage we have read, hold on to a mighty God. Hold on to a mighty God. Cleave on to a mighty God. It is the first Sunday of the year the year 2018. The year is new. Hopes are new. Ambitions are new. Dreams are new. Aspirations are new. And there are new resolutions also in the picture. There is so much optimism so much excitement. We are all looking forward to the new year. Because it is the season of the new beginnings. It is the season of the new opportunities. It is just an exciting time for most of us. But for many of us, or some of us, we could not wait for the year 2017 to come to an end. Because some are saying, it was not my year. It might be, it was the year full of disappointments, a year full of setbacks, a year full of hurts a year full of losses. For some, in 2017, they carried throughout the year deep brokenness, deep sadness. When you mention the year 2017 to some people, you bring tears in their eyes because it brings back all the sorrowful memories the year brought in their lives. But there are those whom, amongst us, when you mention year 2017, 
they will tell you it was wow. I wish we could go back to the year 2017. Because it was filled with so much hope. It was filled with so much life. It was filled with so much great opportunities. Great new beginnings. We are here sitting in these pews, in these chairs this morning, carrying different mixed emotions. Some are excited, some are disappointed. Some have made New Year's resolution. I've made mine too, and I'm praying to God to be faithful and obedient to my healthy diet and go to gym this year. And I'm giving you a responsibility. Hold me accountable to my resolutions for this year. When I stand here again by March or February, she'll be asking, are you still obedient to your New Year's resolutions? We all have New Year's resolutions. Allow me to say, all what we wish for, all what we long for, all what we desire for this year, all what we yearn to see happening this year, it's just wishful thinking if it's not anchored in the power, in the might of God. Without the power of God, we will not endure and weather through 2018. Without the power of God on our side, we are already setting up for a failure. Without the power of God on our side, we are already planning to fail. Life is a difficult assignment that does not need absolute dependence in our own strength, absolute dependence in our own wisdom, absolute dependence in our own possessions, absolute dependence in our own connections and our own networks. This assignment called life, we can only enjoy it only when we hold on to the mighty power of God. When we lay our lives unto the power of God, we can enjoy life. All we need for us to weather through 2018, we just need to cleave and hold on to the power of God. Paul, in the book of Romans chapter 8, is saying, if God is for us, who or what shall be against us? Paul recognizes that when we hold on to the power of God, nothing can hold us. Nothing shall stand against us. The power of God will carry us through in whatever that comes across us. Holding on to the power of God doesn't deny the realities of life. Doesn't deny that we will, does not suggest that we will not encounter challenges in the year 2018. Holding on to the power of God does not suggest that there will be no setbacks in 2018. Holding on to the power of God doesn't suggest it will be all gloomy and shiny in 2018. Holding on to the power of God, it is not an empty promise that all will be a walk in the park surrounded by roses. But holding on in the power of God, it is an assurance that God and his everlasting presence will be with us at all times, in all circumstances. In Isaiah chapter 43, we are giving a picture of the benefits of holding on to the power of God. Isaiah is saying, do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. 
you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One, your Savior. Allow me to say this morning, there are great benefits in holding on to the power of God. Because we subject ourselves, we surrender ourselves to the everlasting presence of God. In the beautiful Psalm of David, we have read this morning, we come across our first praise psalm. Psalms in the olden days were used as songs of faith, used to tell the story of faith, songs used to worship God. Up to this point, we have seen many psalms of prayer, prayer for the righteous. Prayer for the wicked. But this is the psalm that declares the power, the glory, the majesty of God. This psalm is poetic. It demonstrates all powerful things about God. All powerful attributes about God. It is in this psalm that invites us to marvel in the power of the mighty God to whom all heavenly beings and earthly beings ascribe glory. Allow me to share a few things as we are reflecting together on the power of God and the might of God. The first thing I want to speak about the mighty power of God. The power of God, it is the ability and strength that is brought by God to pass whatever that he pleases. The power of God, it is infinite. It is eternal. It cannot be restrained. It cannot be contained. God's power, like God himself, is self-existent. God's power is self-sustained. It doesn't depend on our active worship. God is powerful with us, without us. And God's power cannot be manipulated by us. And God's power cannot be changed by us. God continues to be powerful, even in our absence. When we declare our faith as Christians in our apostolic creed, when we, when we talk about our faith, one of the most important declarations of our faith is that we believe in God who's almighty. We believe in God who's most powerful. We believe in God whose power stretches over everything that exists in heaven and in earth. God who's the source of existence. Everything that exists draws power from the God whom we believe in. It is the nature and it is the character of God to be powerful. There are so many names that define God. There are so many attributes that define God. Some are saying God is merciful. God is compassionate. God is love. And also God is powerful. And God is might. God's power is invisible. But it is most powerful. Someone, when he talks about the power of God, says it is invisible but most powerful. It's like Wi-Fi. It's invisible, but it connects everyone in the world. It is the most powerful tool that is used to connect one another in the world. We cannot see with our naked eyes the power of God, but we can experience the power of God 
through faith. It is when we have absolute trust in God, then we can experience the power of God actively present in our lives. Before everything came to existence, when it was dark, when it was chaotic, when it was formless, the invisible power of God became visible by creating order, by creating stability. The power of God is life-giving. The power of God is life-renewing. The power of God is life-sustaining. The power of God, it is God moving towards us and meeting us at any stage of our lives. Because God is so powerful, he is not an idol that cannot move. Because God is, not, is so powerful, he is not an idol that can be manipulated. Because God is so powerful, he is not an idol that can be told, act like this. It is God who created us, who moves towards us, because he's most powerful. The power of God cannot be held even by the nature. In the beautiful psalm we have read, we hear there were, there were storms raging, but the most powerful God calms the storms. The most powerful God, even nature, bows down before him. Nothing can stand against this God. There is one chorus that we normally sing here that says, even the grave could not hold the power of God. Nothing could hold the power of God. And nothing can limit the power of God. And nothing can change the power of God. The power of God is invisible in our eyes, but its effects are real and discernible. When you can ask people, how did you make it for so many years? And they will tell you, it is only by the grace of God. The power of God transcends every circumstance of life. The power of God goes beyond human limitations. The power of God goes beyond human inabilities, goes beyond human incapabilities, because it is God who creates everything and is the source of everything that exists. Secondly, God is worth our complete worship. If God is most powerful, he is worthy to receive our complete praise, our complete adoration, our complete exaltation. No one other than God should receive worship. No one other than God should be receiving worship. Worship goes beyond singing and dancing. Worship goes beyond being excited by the worship team when it sings for us. Worship, it is when we give total loyalty to God. It is when we open ourselves before God. It is when we give all our hearts to God. It is when we give all our minds to God. It is when we give all our souls to God. And that is worship. And worship cannot be limited by time. And worship cannot be limited by space. We cannot say we only worship God on Sundays. We worship God every day, wherever we are, whatever we do, we worship God. We offer our hearts everywhere we go. We offer our hearts when we are in dark moments, when we are in light moments. We cannot limit God. We cannot limit our worshiping God. When we worship God, we pledge to follow him and we pledge to let go other gods. Gods with small letter. It is, it is God whom we make for ourselves. We pledge to say we won't worship these small gods. We will worship the most powerful God. Sometimes, unintentionally, 
we create small gods for ourselves. Sometimes, unintentionally, we create small gods for ourselves. Sometimes, our treasures become our gods. Sometimes, our possessions become our small gods. Sometimes, our families become our small gods. Sometimes, our achievements become our small gods. We give total allegiance to things that we see. And let me say to you this morning, those things, they perish and fade. But the God that I invite you this morning to give total allegiance to whom? Is the God who is eternal. Is the God who is faithful. Is the God who is not changing. Is the God who is the same yesterday. Is the God who is the same today. Is the God who is the same tomorrow. Even in 2018, I invite you to surrender your life to the same God. I invite you to give total allegiance to the same God. I invite you to give undivided attention to the same God. Allow me to say, you cannot worship two gods at the same time. They will be in competition. And because the most powerful God we worship is a God who has jealousy, we will see the power of God in those moments. Most of us are here this morning. We are shattered, disappointed by the small gods who have been worshipping in all the years. They have deserted us along the way. They have faded along the way. Allow me to invite you to say, give your all to God. Give all to God. Let God be your first priority this year. This year seek to be closer to God. This year seek to renew your relationship with God. This year seek to ascribe your life to God. Lastly, strength and peace is offered by mighty God. The God who is most powerful, the God whom we give our total allegiance, in verse 11 of Psalm 29, we hear these words that the Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. We worship a God whose heart is moved by our worship. We worship a God whom when we give our all unto him, look at us with favor. In this Psalm, David, God offers strength to his people, strength to endure through life, and God also offers peace, peace that will bring calmness and stillness to the souls of his people. In the book of 2 Corinthians, Paul had a vision that the angel of Satan put a thorn in his flesh a thorn that tested his faith, a thorn that tested his love for God. And Paul is saying, I prayed fervently to God to remove the thorn in my flesh. And God did not remove the thorn in Paul's flesh. God said to Paul, my grace is sufficient to carry you through with your thorns. Allow me to say this here, do not pray that God to remove thorns in your life. Do not pray that God to remove mountains in your life. Do not pray that God to remove obstacles in your life. Pray that God gives you strength, grace, and peace to carry you through in the midst of all circumstances that you will be facing in 2018. Don't ask for something that will fail. And when God... When Paul was asking God to remove the thorn in his flesh, God gave him something that is greater than what he wanted. And God gave him what he needed mostly in his life, strength and peace. When we turn to God in faith and ask God 
to give us strength and peace, God will give us the strength and peace. Even when circumstances will tempt us to let go the mighty power of God, allow me to say, allow me to encourage you to hold on to the mighty power of God. The mighty power of God, when we hold on unto it, it removes the shame, it removes the guilt of sin unto us. It reconciles us with God. It brings us to a lifelong relationship with God. This mighty power of God makes us right with God. The food for the journey I'm giving you this year is the most powerful God whose power transcends every situation of life, whose power comes heavy storms. Even the storms of your life, this mighty power of God can calm them. I don't know what storms you are enduring right now, but I can assure you that the most powerful God can calm those storms of your life. When we talk about the mighty powerful God, his power transcends all spheres of life, socially, mentally, politically, spiritually. Nothing can limit the power of God and nothing can hold the power of God. Subject yourself and surrender yourself unto the power of God. I don't know what is happening right now in your life. I don't know what press conferences are happening right now in your mind and in your heart. But I can assure you this, the mighty power of God is still available for me and for you. And as I conclude, let me say this. I don't want to assure you that the road will be easy ahead in 2018. I don't want to assure you that there will be no challenges ahead of 2018. The only thing that I can assure you that the everlasting presence of God will carry us through in this year again, unless we subject ourselves unto him in faith and obedience. Amen. Those who need prayers after prayer, do not go home. There are people waiting to pray with you in the altar. Come, let us pray. And so, mighty God, we give thanks for your word that gives life, gives hope, renews our faith, Lord God. It is our prayer, Lord God, may your mighty power carry us through this year. May your mighty power, Lord God, protect us. May your mighty power, Lord God, lead us. We have nothing without you, Lord God. We are nothing without you, Lord God. You are everything to us. We pray, Lord God, may your presence be with us at all times, in all places. Bless us, Lord God, as we leave this place now, and be with us. Amen.